This is Kira Show here. Now, before I do begin, if I do sound annoyed or anything like that during the recording, I had an interesting experience after I got done with work earlier tonight. Apparently, sometime during my shift, someone tried to break into my car. The only reason I know if you guys whenever I went to unlock my door, someone has stuck a key in there. And it is currently stuck inside my driver's side door. And I cannot get it out. I tried for about an hour and I need to go back to my work tomorrow to look at surveillance cameras and see if anyone tried to break in. Or, well, see if they can catch the fucker. Since there is no limit to my rage right now. In fact, as soon as I found out someone tried messing with my car, my anger went so high I immediately went to back to call. Which is saying a lot for me. Anyways, let us begin. Whenever we last left off, Jiro had just been through her heart surgery and gotten out of it. Deathstroke is in the city, and Midori and this stranger, the other member of the League of Assassins who went with him to the Batcave, she is alive with the Hell Bat suit. And they are at least talking. Now, this is whenever Lex Luthor he is going to get his secrets answered. He got most of the info he wanted, and he's going to be inspecting something that the Just League themselves crafted. He can possibly make improvements to his own tech. This is going to be very interesting. Along with that, he will be making some improvements upon this himself. He was already working on something to try and make himself the next Superman. So, this little beauty here might give him somewhat of a closer insight. Thinking Batman uses Super Soldier Serum or something like that, something to amp up his physical strength in his body. Now, the girl that piloted the suit would unlock it, and at least allow Lex Luthor to inspect it. As, let's say, her name is... I would say something simple. Let's say her name is Sarah, actually. That works. Anyways. Now. She gives Lex Luthor at least surface level access. Telling the suit to make sure weapon systems stay offline. And keep him at least on the training wheel protocol. Now. With that, he does at least try and get some information on it. Looking at it on the surface level. Being inside the suit is amazing, until he does feel a bit of pain. Asking the girl exactly what is the suit power, and why does he feel like this. Her giving him an explanation. It is made for the likes of heavy hitters. Some are even supermans. The suit is very dangerous. It uses your own metabolism against you. If you overdo it, you will die. Lex Luthor immediately getting out of the suit, and is saying what's good with a super-powered suit if you can't use it, especially whenever it's made to protect you, but it will also kill you. Hmm. I'm guessing it's just they put that protocol in place for Batman, then, in case he ever went rogue. Well, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, I do agree. Well, then I believe I can at least remove those restrictions. Along with that, if you really do want some revenge, I have been working on an experiment myself. Really, what is it? Well, is it another Superboy clone? Actually, no, it's not. There were enough Supermen for my liking. 
So I've thought about it myself. I've wanted to take on the mantle of Superman before. I've wanted to don it, be the real Superman, the human one. Thinking about it, not only would it be disrespect for seeing as me invading something of his, I scrapped the idea. I, but I had no, another one. I will not bear his symbol. But I will at least be as strong as him. Him holding up a little pill, saying that this is his latest experiment. The serums and everything he has, they're all very much capable of doing anything. In fact, he's been collecting data on everything he knows. He does have files on the Flash and some Amazon lineage. But there's one thing that you do need to know. These pills, they're, well, they call them Superman pills. Now, for those of you who are confused, injustice, that's it. For those of you who don't get that, I'm not going to explain it. You guys can go look it up. I'm assuming if you guys have watched it to this point, you know everything I'm talking about. Especially since this is going to be part what? 33? Anyways. Sorry about that. Now, with that being said, this is whenever Midoriya, he just stares at it and reaches his hand out, asking Lex exactly what does he mean Superman? And just like what you think. Enhance speed. Enhance strength. Or, well, it's what I should be going for. Right now, this is version 9. I was working on version 10 whenever you did come in. Right now, you are just as durable as him. Hmm. Interesting. You do also experience some cell regrowth. Meaning that you will also have a slight healing factor. Okay. Interesting, then. Lex Luthor is saying that if he could test that out, then he would be doing him a very big favor. Sure, I can test it out. But the Flash, you said you had info. Ah, yes, quite right. As he basically just tells his computer to pull up all information on the Flash. It's showing off a file. Barry Allen. True Identity. Name, The Flash. Barry Allen was once caused and well, caught in the middle of a science experiment. Theoretically, it was possibly from his own doing. And for the way time works, apparently according to The Flash, he can run fast enough to go back in time. He has done it on several occasions. Especially one which he called the Flash Point where he met alternate versions of everybody. Then again, he was not too sure as to what this means. For them. Does this mean that the previous incarnation of the universe was different? And if so, what was it? Since nothing changed to them. In fact, there was at least one small theory in the back on the very bottom of the page which he has yet to confirm. Is it possible that the Flash struck himself with a bolt of lightning? Theoretically, it seems possible, since he has seen a Speed Force storm before. It was exactly like the night the Flash got his powers. Now, with that being said, he would also look through everything, sitting down at the computer, him and Sarah, looking through it, as Lex is trying to stay the suit more, asking the girl for more access. To which she would just look up, saying an authorization code, and then look back down. The two look through it, Midori at least pointing out something. One of the Flash's villains. This looks perfect. 
Looking up and telling Alexa to who was Velocity. Don't know. Apparently some random human. Some chick who gained the Flash's power. How did she do it? Don't know. From what I know, she never had them before. In fact, she wasn't even, she wasn't even in Star City whenever the, the Dark Matter Generator exploded. Huh. So, who are you? Now, with that being said, eventually, after some more time, Midoriya would have walked downstairs, taking the elevator down to the underground labs, walking through and looking around, and looking to see Jiro, who's recuperating in a hospital bed. It puts him at a lot of unease. He's not sure why. Why does his whole body feel this way? As the tears do at least begin to stream down his face, he does see a memory. Himself basically shuffling down the hall. And at least barging into a hospital room. Looking to see two people and then Jiro just sitting there with bandages covering her ears. As he does at least hear the words he says. He's so sorry he couldn't protect her. You lost your quirk because of me. Jiro, I'm... Her about to go say something. The Zendari basically just turns and then runs off. His vision doesn't end there. He remembers where he ran to. He remembers everything. He remembers just running straight home, and thinking that he failed her, thinking that it was his fault, mm -hmm. remembering the bullies, remembering how they met. And he does at least drop down, and hearing a voice again, hearing loud screaming in his skull. As he basically just grabs the sides of his head and smashes it forwards, directly into the cement wall. As he does at least scream out in his own mind, Who are you? Why are you tormenting me? I've been through enough! That being where something at least does respond. Who are you? Me? Who are you? I I'm Azuku. No, you're not. I'm Azuku Midoriya. How did you know I'm... Well, sorry to say this, but you're an imposter, now get out of my head. I'm not in your head. What? I'm in Coast City. What are you talking about? I don't know, but I need to hurry. I don't know what's going on. The place is exploding and I'm trying to find Jiro. I don't know where she is. Is she safe? Is she alright? Oh. I think I know what's going on. Listen to me. Who are you? I said him. I'm Azuka Midoriya. Right now, I have three rings on my hands. And I'll tell you one thing. Guess correctly. And I'll at least try and believe you. Now, he would just say, well... He remembers that he gave up his red ring to protect her. Midoriya's body at least stopping. At least tensing up with that statement. Okay, what, well then, which one's my work? Well, I'm gonna guess the green lantern ring, yellow lantern, and the star sapphire ring. Star sapphire? Am I just call this the pink ring? I mean, it works. Anyways, do you believe me now? No. But it's my public knowledge. Try again. Fine. If you're close to Jiro, look at her red rake. Midori just walked into the room. Jiro is still passed out and recovering from the operation. 
Midori just walking in and looking directly down at the, gr the, the green ring, the red ring, and saying exactly what is he wanting to do with this. Put it on. Apparently he goes heartless with it, right? I'm not doing that. Of course not. Now, as you would just say, give it authorization code, these, the next few series of numbers. Midoriya is saying those out loud. The ring saying, authorize, well, access granted. Data file shown. As you just watch it happens. Watching the file. As it does at least set up something. Midoriya just watching it. As you just going saying, hi, I'm, well, Azuka Midoriya. I'm not too sure as to what to do. I want to start keeping a file on record of me. In case I... Well... Not die. I don't plan on dying. But... Well... Of my life. I've... Been through a lot. And if you're listening to this, just know, I went out like a hero. I don't care what anyone says. I probably died doing what I believed in. And I'm not going to say I didn't. I will fight for anyone who I think deserves it. I don't believe that I can solve everything with murder. In fact, I don't think anyone can. I myself have killed far too many people, even though I was possessed by Umbrax. Even then, the ones I did kill, they were accidents, yes. And I'm still trying to rectify those. So, along with that, just know, on my home planet, as they're just beginning a full audio log. Midori just sitting down to watch this. Paying attention to it. Is this his autobiography? Why the fuck would I write an autobiography? Watching as it finally does at least get to a couple words. That pierced through his spine. Pierced through his own soul. As he actually just feel it, back over in Coast City. The mark at least beginning to burn a bit brighter, becoming visible on the body. As Midori does hear the next following words. Now, Burning Desire, Kayokajiro. That girl, she's the most important person to me. In fact, well... You probably don't care about this, but, well, uh, sorry I'm nervous, but I plan on marrying that girl after we graduate. In fact, I kind of already had a ring picked out. I have stashed it somewhere, and only I know the location. So. It's going to be interesting, because I plan on doing it directly after the ceremony. So, I'm going to have fun with that. And that is a promise I will keep. Not to myself, but to her. We've always protected each other. We've always been there for each other. The universe wants me and her together. And I will stop at nothing to make sure that that happens. Not even death could keep us apart. The audio file is ending. Now, Midori is just sitting there, hearing all that. The ring dropping out of the air and clattering to the ground. Jiro at least waking up. She's at least starting to come through. Looking up to see Midoriya. 
Him basically just sitting on the ground with tears streaming down his face. And the mark visible. Waiting for a second. As he basically does at least start muttering to himself. I made a promise I didn't keep. Marry her? That's odd. I'm remembering. Her waiting on this, listening to this, waiting for him to say something. You made a promise about what? What was it about? Waiting for him to mention it. As Midori does at least stand up and say out loud, whoever you are, I trust you, I guess. You said you're in Coast City. Yes, I am. Why? Well, I'm going to head there, try and meet up with you. Can you meet me halfway? No, I can't. In fact, every time I try and leave the city, I just go back to one place. Oh, so you're stuck there. Guess so. All right, then. I'll just come to you. Midori is just walking out and heading up. As he does at least take flight, heading for Coast City. As soon as he does go airborne, Deathstroke would see this, following his trail. Why is the kid heading that way? The only thing that way is nothing but ruins and a smoking crater. Now, with that being said, Sarah would walk into the room and ask her exactly what is she doing. She's been awake for a bit of time now. Why don't you try and talk to him? Try and stop him? Well, I don't know. I just saw him remember something. He said he made a promise to me, I think. I don't remember what it was. Or, no, I would. Yeah, okay, well, I'm not gonna barge into that. But, hey, as Jira interrupts, asking why didn't she try and beat them more is a question she had rolling around in her head for a while. Why didn't you try and attack us more at the bank or Gotham General? Oh, that's easy. The suit probably would have killed me before anything would have happened. Besides, all the knowledge in our heads would counter each other. By the time I got serious and he got serious, both of us would have been exhausted. He would have toyed with me enough to weaken me and take me down. However, my advantage, you can call it, would have been enough to beat him senseless. As soon as I heard that he, did, he had no allegiance to the League, things got a bit easier. Besides, only Batman would know when Batman isn't lying. So, hey, I'm not going to waste my metabolism on that. In fact, I'm still building it back up. Her just showing her arm. The area around it was covering a good portion. But now at least does look a lot better. Saying that it's still building, but hey, she's not complaining. Now, with that being said, Jiro would get helped to her feet. And at least walk out. Now, I do believe that that will be a good point to leave that off of, and I do hope you guys enjoyed. Sorry for losing my lip. Sorry for losing my temper for a minute there during recording. I am still very angry. In fact, I don't even feel tired. Huh. Anyways, I do hope you guys enjoyed.